Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to design a housing for a wireless charger for a smartphone in Shaper 3D. In this video I will focus mainly on narrating the process I used when creating the sketches and 3D bodies and highlight some smart modeling tips and shortcuts. In this exercise I try to do most of my work via direct modeling to explore variations very quickly and only make minimal use of sketches. Kind of like what you see here. And this is a much more fluid and productive workflow. All the files you see here are being shared with you, so feel free to download those so you could follow this demonstration. So when you want to design a nice housing for a wireless charger, the main reason why I wanted to do this is simply wireless chargers are very cheap to buy, which is great, but they're kind of like flat on a table and that makes it then difficult to really interact also with your phone. There are obviously some solutions on the market you could buy, but they also feel rather very generic or usual designs. So I thought this is actually a really nice topic to explore creatively what we could do in terms of design to package a charger nicely and also think about how I could then interact with my smartphone. The first step obviously you want to do is with the charger you purchased, take measurements and then create a three-dimensional representational model. So you see here I just have the basic disk including also some cables because there are cables attached to it so I need to be mindful of those. They will bend a little bit. Here they are modeled very static like it's hard plastic but by testing the cable a little bit I tried or well, I figured out actually the degree how much I could bend those. Obviously we don't want to bend cables too much because that could damage the cable. Then based on the phone you have you can take measurements too. Here I made a very accurate model of the phone I have, including also the case rim. I on purpose actually modeled this one just with the bottom part open, just like a rim around, so I can position the charger directly on the phone. But also, um, the wireless chargers work with cases for a phone, it's just roughly a millimeter material thickness. Okay. And again, these files are short, shared with you, so you could open those and import them. So how did, how did I come up then with these final two designs? Let me talk about those, the end result first, actually. The first one, as you can see, is just a round base. There you can see there's actually the housing for the cable. The cable goes to the back, there's a small opening, and the phone will snap on top. Everything is built very tight, so tolerance might have to be adjusted at one point. And you see this is the basic geometry for the base, including a small silicone insert, in case you want to make one, otherwise you could leave this part out, and then the charger that goes in there. And the same also here for for this cube. The interesting part of the, with the cube is how the phone then is angled. And it's also in terms of visual quality, a different way how to present it. And the cube I could rotate. So the phone could be more horizontal or the phone could be actually more parallel to the table. So there's a certain level of play um, that's possible with this design. It's not only about I have a charger how do I design a housing around it so that I, um, I can charge my phone with it? Okay, so let's take a look at the development phase. And this basically shows you how or where I started the design and then how I ran through it. So on the left, let me hide the phones. This is pretty much how I started. So the first idea was a cylindrical shape, then I rotated it, changed the top part a little bit. You can see these faces are slightly at an angle. Here the faces are vertical down. In this case here, when we zoom, 
to this position. There you see everything expands to the bottom, making the base a little bit bigger. And this is something you can then very easily discover when you make variations of a design. So I started on the left side, copy and paste, manipulated, copy and paste, further manipulated, copy and paste, made another variation. So it's not, what I try to stress here is a, a technique how to very quickly come up with ideas. Now you can have some ideas in your mind, but when you start modeling, you might discover problems, you might discover other opportunities too. And it's, you don't want to be slowed down by technicality or modeling very clean. So you want to employ um, a process that is actually kind of fast. And I will talk about this quick modeling, of course, in this video more. A day later, I wanted to try out a different shape. And so my question was, well, what can I do with a cube? So I pretty much did the same. Made a rectangle, extruded a cube, rotated the top face, rotated the whole base, added a draft to the bottom, identify that these edges are kind of like sticking out really far, as you can see here in those models, maybe rounding them. Yeah, and then here, there you can see, there is actually a design where the base is 45 degree rotated. Then this way, I can very nicely kind of like look on the phone from the front. If I rotate the cube in this way, the phone then is actually rotated a little bit, but it, it allows me kind of like from an angle to take a look more at the phone. You see that this place is rotated, it might look awkward, but this is more for the idea of when the phone is actually next to me, not in front of me. And then of course, well, I could also rotate it so that the phone is actually horizontal, maybe for watching a movie or or something like this. Let's say uh, I'm on a kitchen table or or somewhere else. So this is this was a very quick idea or process to also not only envision a particular design, but also think about how could, for example, this be used to think about various use cases? Okay, with this done, uh, this hopefully explained a little bit the overall process I used. Let's take a look at how this design was actually done and how you can use the direct modeling in Shaper to very quickly explore various ideas. And we want to build and model very precise. For example, these openings we have there. I want to very easily always cut and cut and cut, but I don't want to have to create sketches all the time. So let's go to the workspace area and we would like to create a new design. But for the moment, I would like to talk about the objects we have here. You see there's a charger file, a smartphone, and a smartphone raw file. Let's go to the smartphone raw file. That's actually the design that has all the elements in it. For example, the sketches, the images, and the individual building elements. So you see the display, the phone body, buttons, case rim, etc. This is the space how or where I designed the geometry. I try to make this very precise because if this is off, then this could provide a lot of problems later on. And here I have the same model. However, the design, as you can see, is heavily simplified. It's just the phone and the case rim. When I hide the case rim, there you can see everything is in there. Logically, that makes sense. Now it's just one object to move. I have all the interface elements in it. This is what I want to include. I just wanted to point this out. So let's make a new file. And there we are. Now everything is set to millimeters. Our snappings are all turned on. Very good. Let's go to import and I will import the charger. There we are. So this design has all these elements still in. So let's delete those. We don't need those. And all this I will join together, call this charger. Very good. Let's do this one more time. Here's the smartphone. Just as you can see, two objects. That makes it now very easy. Double tap, double tap, 
to select this, position it, and I can move this one up and try to eyeball that. This is get, getting very close. This does not have to be super precise because this is a loose object that moves around a little bit. So here in this case for a presentation, this is actually sufficient. But I will move this a little bit further up and make a new folder and then put this in there. So I can very easily show and hide all this at the same time. Let's call this folder. Okay, so there is now my charging disk. This is one object, very nice. You can move this one up, and there we are. Cool. And now I'm going to show you how very quickly we can come up with design ideas and then use the direct modeling in Shaper 3D to play through it. So I would like to start with a design that's maybe easy to work on. Let's make something that's cubical. So new sketch, we go to rectangle. I will select the rectangle center to a corner. And on the ground, now I can make myself a sketch and I pay attention to my, my charging station. You see where the cable is. So this actually is going to intersect a little bit. So maybe 80, is this good? I don't know. I double tapped the charging disk, and then I click on the 3D widget and move it to this corner. You see, or edge, it then centers it on the disk. And let's rotate this 45 degrees. Okay, this actually should work. So I can put um, all this into the box by rotating this a little bit. Nice, that's good. Then, how tall do we make this now? Select this, extrude this up. I don't want to cut, so make a new body. 40, let's say 50, let's go to 240. There we are, cool. Okay, very nice. This face I would like to rotate. And we will do this first. Double tap the whole cube. Then I rotate this 45 degrees. By the way, I can then do the same here. But again, now be careful. Here we can't just double tap because this is a irregular object. Recenter the widget in there. Very good. Charger we can hide for the moment. And now this face I can select, go to move and rotate because this is a cube. It finds the perfect geometrical center instantly. And no, I will rotate this 15 degrees. Okay. So is this 15 degrees actually good? I don't know. Um, before I really continue working, let's let's put the phone onto it. I don't really want to move this phone and rotate it and all that all the stuff. I mean I could. It's just a little bit more labor intensive. So here go down and rotate 15 degrees and bring this back up. Yeah, could work. Let me show you a different way. It's actually pretty cool. And that's via the align command. So I select the lower face of the phone. You see on the left side, align pops up as an option, select it. And select the target face. Now the software tries to kind of like predict how this should be positioned. We'll rotate this a little bit, 90 degrees. So I'll go to here, yeah. Very good. Now we can slide it. You have to rotate this a little bit more. Now, so there we see who we are going to run into an issue actually with the camera array. So maybe this type of a star orientation is actually not very good. The reason why I, I show this process is just to make you understand, I started first modeling really a very basic cube and then try to envision when this is the final design, would this even work? Before I spent a lot of time designing something and then later I realized, oh no, I overlooked such a beginner mistake. And then I have to redo everything. So this means this doesn't really work. Let's make a new copy. 
45. We can select this face. And when we rotate this 15 degrees, yeah, this will work probably much better. I know already by having looked at it when I rotate this 45 degree, now the phone is not going to hit the ground. This is going to be nicely lifted off the ground. This will work well. Okay, good. Undo, put the piece back to there. I will hide the phone for the moment because essentially now I prototype that this is going to work. How do we position now the charger on it? And there we are. So select the charger disk, align. You see there, because this is a circle, it finds the geometrical center, which is cool. So with the pencil, I can start drawing from there and then actually say, well, this center point align to these points. And I say here, to the center point. There we are. Isn't this amazing? And we know this sticks over. So let's rotate this 45 degrees. Cool. But now the charger disk is actually on top. It has to go into the piece. So we do this. It's also easy. When I select the top surface here, it tells me that this whole object is 7.25 millimeters thick. It's good to know. So double tap. Position the 3D widget. So I'm just moving it somewhere on this face. You see then it, it aligns. And this goes down minus 7.25. There we are. Pretty cool. Okay, so now essentially I have the, the disk nicely and flush in it. How do I continue? Because we have this already in there, we just can't simply use this disk and cut it out of the cube. So we have to create, in this case, a sketch. That's very easy, however. Select the face, finger, double tap. There we are. There we see also the midpoint. I can draw from there, or if you want to be more precise, I simply draw from corner to corner. See, then it projects the edges in, and now I have, for example, this cross. Actually, one line would do it because this line has a midpoint. And from there, I can draw the dimension. This is 30.625. Very good. And then this we will select and extrude into it 7.25. In the sketch, I can delete. I don't need it anymore. So now the charger will perfectly fit in. Yeah. If, however, I would like to have a little bit of a silicone, like a one millimeter element around, so when I put the charger in, it's really pressed and hold in shape. Keep in mind the charger has a pretty strong magnetic feature. So we have to expand this a little bit. And it's also easy. So I one millimeter. So this should be 8.25. And here I select this and this will be 31.625. And there you see there's a nice rim around it. How do we fill the space now? <laughs> it's actually um, quite, quite easy. And this is where now direct modeling and also understanding geometrical shapes comes in very, very useful. So we will do an extrude of this disk. We extrude this up as a new body by 8.25. And that's the whole disk. Inside this, this one, I make a copy, move this up and move it back down. You see there's the copy now. It's all good. I select this. Now this goes back to 30.625. And I need to know which one it is. Yeah, this one. And then here, this will be 7.25. Very good. So you see now I made actually very quickly um, a representation of the charger base. So then this will get this subtracted. See how easy that is? Amazing. So where's actually our base? And let's give those objects names, insert. And we call this base. 
pretty cool. Okay. Now it might be a good point. So we have to shell this at one point. Let's think about it. Can we shell this? Will it shell? Are there any intersecting elements? And what I was looking for, let's go to a side view and lower right corner, turn on cut section. This is good. Here, this is not necessarily really ideal for injection molding because this should be more vertical. For 3D printing, however, not a big deal. All the top pieces being inserted. The shelling, however, is a command we should really only do at the end because when I would like this to be rounded, no. I have to be careful that well, I, I don't cut into the inside, so I have to round this first, and then I can round this. I mean, this works. It's just a lot of extra work. I could undo everything, but I thought it would be really nice to show you when I select all these faces I created and click delete. I have my original block back. Welcome to direct modeling. It is amazing. Here, I'm going to round those 10 millimeters. Okay, and then this, I will give a rounding of two just to break this a little bit. Now, actually, I will shell the inside. I'm simply saving myself some work. There, pretty cool. Okay, nice, now. So you see kind of like how step-by-step step I started from a rectangle developing this shape. And that's also the position then when you make various studies, maybe version A, version B, version C. So let me go back here to there. So if we take a look at the bottom, you see these are all just the solid versions. And then these are still solid versions but a little bit more refined in terms of exploring positioning of the phone. Now here, for example, I if I want this, I need to round at least that corner. And then afterwards, then we actually went back to this version. And there you see even everything shelled out with a bottom cap, etc. This is just, in terms of workflow, the most productive way how to do this one step logically after the next one. It's an iterative process. Very good. So what else can we do? Our insert is here. Here's our charger. So we, um, we need to have an opening also for the USB-C cable that goes through. I have a measurement in this file. There it is. So this is pretty much the dimension I have. And kind of like I identified if we put this into a 13 by seven millimeter rectangle, we can very comfortably in so or push it through the opening. Shouldn't scratch or anything. So 13 by seven, very easy to memorize. Let's go to here. I go to a top sketch, make a new sketch. And there we are, 13. I keep this eight, so this is four millimeters left, four millimeters right. Very good. Okay, see the rest is all nicely symmetrical. So this fill, I will extrude up and go with 10 millimeters. Then I will hide this and this, very good. And I know on this corner there, I have to push this element in. And I will show you know, how, how we position everything so nicely. Very good. So first thing I will do, move this to here, move this to there. And I could select this, make a sketch, draw a diagonal, I like way too much work. This is where then the sketching process is simply way too labor intensive and direct modeling via snapping is just faster and equally precise. So what we'll do is first, because this is a rectangle and this is a circle, I can align them. You see, I just selected the two faces and it is a perfect alignment. Now, this needs to be rotated 
45 degrees. There we are. Done. Double tap, move this to an edge or on the face, and now I can move this one down. But, hmm, this is too high. When we sink this down, it has to go through the material thickness. But ideally from this edge to down there, it should also be two millimeters. So how do we do this? Let me show you. Again, <laughs> it's so simple. We select these two edges and that tells us this is 8.25 millimeters. Okay, so this should be 8.25 millimeters. You see now that the top surface is flush with the other top surface. When I select this, this is two millimeters and select this also two millimeters. So that means if I select this one and try to get this to here and then this has to be at least two millimeters in from here to there, 2.875. So 0.875. Let's see what this says. Yeah, two millimeters down there. Okay. So when we select this one, reposition this, and then move this down by two millimeters, it should perfectly try to intersect. So let's see if this is correct. So you minus this one and don't keep anything just cut it open as a little bit of an of a gap there what is this uh 1.9 so it's a tiny inaccuracy and here yeah so you see 0 0.035 i was a little bit off so how do we fix this Move this down. There we are. Done. Okay. When I oh see, let's what's going on there. I want to see this shape here. Ah, okay. See, um, maybe I did not move this correctly, but we want this distance to be two millimeters. And look at that. Fixed. I hope you you see how useful actually all this is uh, and how how the software heals itself okay because we have to cut this opening also into the silicone i will actually undo everything here and i want to check something you and you so they are the same very good so double tap go to here then we bring this down two millimeters Okay, I will hide here the space for the moment. And this, I simply make nine, so I overbuild it. So it already cuts through, very good. And then U minus this one. But this time I want to keep the removed object. In my case here, only this I need to repair. There we are. So the base is done. Let's take a look at the insert. There's this piece, very good. And U minus this one. There we are. Oh, this time we can delete this body and select this and adjust this there. Very good, cool. Very nice. So I keep a little bit of a, of a lip on top because otherwise this flexible material might move too much. We can now go ahead, round these edges, make this nicer. 2.5, 2.5. And we can do the same also with the base. If this should be silicone we can't really have sharp edges that would not really work well because i can tear there 
number one, number two, and very good. Let's do an overlay. Brilliant. Very nice. Let's put the charger in and let's take a look. So mm -hmm, I need a cut section, ideally. How do I do a cut section? Pretty cool. Uh, not pretty cool, very easy to do, I mean. We just make ourselves here a line. Then go to Add and Construction Plane. We want through edge at an angle. Yeah, 45 degree. Yep, this is perfect. And you see how we can rotate this. Select this plane with a finger and double tap and then turn on Cut Section. And there we are. Okay. Very good. You can also move this one down. Yeah. Okay, you can see the cable is a little bit rotated. And the part two, because it's um, No, it's 45 degrees rotated and before it was 15 degrees rotated. But this way I can very much identify when we turn this, go to this view and can hide this. Maybe turn the charger off on. Now I can see, so does this really intersect too much? So you see up there, it overlaps a little bit. But then again, the cable is flexible. We can press it down more. In this construction plane, I simply call section view or section. This we can delete. We don't need it anymore. And go back to our top view. Yeah, and you see, it's actually super easy how, how this works. So this construction plane here, I can, or not construction plane, the sketch I can keep. I can also remove it. It's not really that necessary anymore. So when we, we need to have an opening and also a base. So what could be a good way how to do this? So we select this here, double tap. There we are. Then two millimeter, two millimeter. This is two millimeter. Now we make this actually four millimeters. There we are. These I will lock. They should be vertical. They should be equal. So they're the same size, two. And then put an arc on top. The arc should be tangent. Very good. This actually we make four because there will be a bottom up, a bottom plate. And I will keep this at the moment where it is, but not do the now we no, let's let's do the opening. Yeah. We cut through. Very good. And the sketch. We're done. And we can delete. Okay, so now I have the bottom part. I would like to put something that goes inside. How how do we do this? I select this face. Then I will go more and project and simply tap the grid. So the grid is now seen as a construction plane. I can project the the edges of this geometry into a sketch. Click done, hide all this. <laughs> there we are, see, pretty awesome. So we want to fill the space uh, here. Yeah, this way, very nice. Select this, including this little element there. And we go up two millimeters. I don't know how much we really in the end will do it, but you see there's a little bit of a lip. You can call this um, back plate. And this will go right in there. And then this is sufficient space for the charger to uh, the cable to come out. There's also our insert. Yep, now this all works really well. There's our phone. So what was what was the rotation? Oh, how much did we rotate this? Select this, more, 
add project onto this grid. There we are. Let's hide everything else. There is this line we projected. I will lock it so it cannot move. Make this horizontal and see, so 165. 15, no? obviously I knew it was 15 degrees, but I just wanted to show you how we can quickly re-measure something, bare sketching. So that means this whole object, I would like to rotate by 15 degrees. Um, okay, 15, there we are. And now I would like to position this one down to there. Actually, we'll do it this way. Let's say we, we're going to explore more variations. So I make myself a copy of this. There, this one. So the rim, if I want to, I could add to the phone to make things a little bit easier visually. So we also can see what the interface elements are. I simply remove this rim. No, when I, I select this face and then select this face. I can do an align. Just be careful about possible misalignments. And we can see this, how this is a little bit off and why is this happening? It's actually very logical. So this is a nice rectangular square with rounded edges, but here we have the camera array on it. So what I will do is simply, I could eyeball it. So I rotate this 15 degrees, very good. And go to the grid and just move this down, go to the side view. And simply get this very close. This will just loosely later sit on it. So this approach is more than fine. Double tap, go to here. We can bring this up a little bit. Okay, there we are. That worked. Let me show you a different way. So we can uh, select this and then go to align. But we figured out that from here to there, that just doesn't really work. But what I can do is, so when I select this, go to align. Well, I don't have to go from the midpoint can also go from the midpoint of this edge to here. Then, yeah, it's a little bit off, but it's centered. That's the more important point. Double tap, move the 3D widget, and move this down. Well, also works. Third way how to do this is also, let's see, should work. Top face, align to the puck. Okay, now so <laughs> works is just wrong. Yeah, here. Let's maybe do a flip. Oh, look at that. Okay, so at least it's centered. Now we can rotate it. Okay, yeah, but it's now in it. Not a big problem. Click done. What's the thickness? 7.5 four millimeters. Okay, that's all we need to know. Double tap, move the 3D widget, 7.4 millimeters, side view. Yep, it sits on it. Let's move this a little bit back. Yeah, okay, no? Very good. Okay, I hope that basically with this process, which I'm I was showing you how to very minimally only use sketches, but then primarily use direct modeling, how you can create uh, these various shapes quite quickly. There's one thing I want to go back to our base development file. There's another good tip I thought is very valuable to highlight. So you see here we have this design and then later everything is slightly angled. So let me make a copy of this. And there, and I just, I move this over. Very good. And 
two pack so it's nicely on the grid i really love working clean on the grid there so now um the base is nice horizontal and the top needs to be rotated there are two ways actually we could do this i could now obviously select this and then go to rotate and rotate it if i want to but the top is so nicely designed it's also more complex well i can also simply rotate the the bottom part so when i select this and i go to rotate let's see what happens when i move this around you see here it snaps to the center of that circle here when i go to this edge it snaps to the center of that circle that's brilliant because this is perfectly at the center and this actually has to go up this way 15 millimeters okay now this is way too high and we can bring this down more so what's what's actually the length of this line 2.36 so when we put a two millimeter base in this ideally should be then four so we have to add uh, one point six to seven one point six to seven close now uh, four millimeters okay and in real life here also um double tap and let's do it this way double tap and double tap copy Zoop. make a copy bring this over there we are very good uh, come on select everything so now this whole thing i will actually just simply rotate backwards go to here one more time and oh did not want to move it i wanted to rotate it there there we are obviously now we have to move this down a little bit there we are yeah but how do we make this flush now go to here see did it snap really to a grid it did not so hmm, this is not really great i do to make sure this is perfect let me show you a little trick so we select this face with a finger double tap now we're sketching in this um on this plane and i will do an offset of those inwards okay maybe this is too complex just here so this is 11 and 11 very good yeah so um what i'm trying to figure out here now where is actually a geometrical center maybe so there we go down and there we have our center point cool so the reason why i did this is and let's go to a top view and i will select all this including this sketch and just move it away go to your bottom view throw myself a line no reason why i did this is just simply there have a point to snap to so now check this out no one number two double tap double tap so all the objects are selected and now i go to um more translate and then i say well from this sketch to the sketch just move it 
this is just not needed anymore. We can delete it. Then we go to your left view. There. So you see, actually, we, we brought this down cleaner onto a grid when I zoom in. Yeah. OK. Let's actually undo this step because it is not where it should be. Oh, interesting. How did I meant? Oh, I see what what happened. Okay, let me let me do this one more time. I made a an interesting mistake. Well, it's good actually. This mistake happened, so you can see how, how even for pros, this might be a possibility to do. So this is actually nicely on there. So one more time. So you. You and you, we select and then more trans translate and from there to there. Ah, <laughs> there, that was the mistake I did. I trusted my eyes, but I actually snapped to the wrong snap object. Very good. No, I'm glad actually this happened because I didn't point this out and it's good you saw this mistake and how we fixed this because now yes thank you everything is nice and flush so the way then how i developed for example the additional shapes with this being more tapered or actually being going straight horizontally down was simply this way and then we can bring this lecture also to an end so this solid model was maybe a good idea, but I don't really like this to be that much at an angle. Well, it's actually quite dramatic, could be nice, but if I want it to be more straight down, maybe that's not really what, what I'm looking for. So to create the design I need, super easy. First, I will go to Tools, Project, select this, select the grid, and project it straight down. There we are. Then I go to Tools and Offset, select these outer edges, and offset them. Maybe minus one. OK. So this one we hide for the moment. All those I will now offset back one millimeter. So now I have actually the original parameter. And here, this I can delete. Now I have my rotated profile. I have this when I can loft it. Very nice. Can you see? What happens when we select this and delete it? No, it just deletes this edge. Because we have these, um, the reason why I was just curious trying this out, we have here rounded fillets. We could also have deleted actually before we created the, um, the projections, deleted actually that fillet. Or we'll just keep it. Okay, so how do I now get the opening for the charger back in? All is very easy. Now there's my charger. I don't need any sketch. So here's my body. There's my charger. So this body minus this charger. I would like to keep the charger. There you are. Can you see? Very easy. And if I now want to create this, this offset, well, Simply this, I will select, make bigger as desired, then the inside I delete, and then I loft between those two. Now I even have a, a variable radius, which is quite nice. You see, it goes from bigger down actually to smaller. And then I would continue cutting the opening by the existing 3D geometry of the, the wireless charger. So I don't have to create sketches or something. And then to create the opening for the cable, same process as I showed you before. 
And this pretty much sums everything up about what I wanted to demonstrate to you, how we can use a limited amount of sketching and then simply a very smart application of direct modeling tools to very comfortably and easily develop nice looking and functional housings for wireless chargers.